I've recently covered how to use a water pressure gauge to discover plumbing leaks within your home and help you locate them. But does a regular plumber's 15-minute test detect smaller leaks? And what is the smallest plumbing leak we can detect with a water pressure gauge? Here's the deal. You and I are not plumbers and we're not paid by the hour. So we could run these tests as long as we want to find the smallest leak. Or can we? I intend to find out and take you with me. Here are the three tests I'm running. What are the smallest leaks we can detect in 15 minutes, one hour, and eight hours? Before going over the results of the water pressure gauge test, here were the ground rules. First, the water was shut off to the house, creating a closed system. Second, no systems were running, such as an ice maker or water softener. Now here are a few extra considerations specific to a water pressure gauge test. A water pressure gauge test is dependent on the amount of plumbing in your house. For instance, my trunk and branch system has one awful long run as the result of a slab leak where we ran a bypass with PEX through the attic. This added at least an extra 16 feet of line, definitely making a water pressure test harder. A smaller house will be even more sensitive while a larger house will be less sensitive. A manifold system full of home runs will have a similar problem until you turn off every home run. With only one active line at a time, it is much easier to discover which line has a leak due to a whole lot less active plumbing under test. Yet another reason to love manifold systems. Second, if you choose to leave your water heater on, this will have a huge impact on your results during longer tests. You need to turn the water heater off and cool down the water in a tank water heater for reliable results. During the first couple baseline overnight tests, I ran them with the water heater still online. You can see there were spikes in pressure from thermal expansion. No one is using hot water at one or four in the morning. The water heater kicked on to maintain temperature. And while I say spike because we're looking at eight hours over the course of a few seconds in a time lapse, in reality, the heat cycle lasted five minutes. But that five minutes increased the pressure between 20 to 30 PSI. Thermal expansion makes a longer test harder, if not impossible, to get an accurate reading at the end. While you probably won't see the sudden increase in pressure as often during a shorter 15-minute or one-hour test based solely on less opportunity, this phenomenon is very much a player distorting your results. You just saw the baseline test for 15 minutes, and here's the one-hour baseline test where you can see the thermal contraction at work as the water cooling in the tank decreases the pressure. For those of you following my water monitor and shutoff series, I'm going to spoil some of the surprise from my upcoming fin leak detection video to prove this point. Every single night during the automated four minute plumbing check, there's about a 0.2 PSI drop in pressure due to my water heater cooling. The overnight plumbing test hasn't caught a heating cycle from the water heater yet. If you're looking at this video, you probably don't have the luxury of getting a baseline test because you only want to know this kind of information when you have a leak, unless you're curious like me and I'm giving you a virtual high five. Obviously, if you have a leak, that's only going to compound the pressure going down as hot water contracts. So you have to cool your water heater off entirely to eliminate pressure loss from thermal expansion, which, if present, compounds the pressure lost by a leak. Rather than just draining the water heater, I highly suggest speeding this cooling process up and not wasting perfectly good hot water, which I cover in this video. Water contracting goes for any kind of water heater. Even if you have a tankless water heater, if you have hot water in your lines, the thermal contraction can still cause havoc on your results as the water cools. Just be aware of what conditions exist before you start your testing. What I'm showing here are the eight hour baseline tests with a fully cooled water heater. These were run overnight when there's less chance for water usage, but there's still cooling from the drop in temperature outside, impacting the temperature of the plumbing exposed outside and the PEX line run through the attic. So you'll see a drop of two to three PSI towards the end of the test when temperatures are at the lowest. Based on all these factors, I decided doubling the now expected drop of two to three PSI to five PSI over eight hours is a big enough drop in pressure to indicate a leak is present if the system is fully cooled. A single drop just over every four minutes gives me a drop of five PSI. That's only four teaspoons of water. This measurement will apply to the rest of the tests 
since I will use a 5 psi drop as the smallest measurement we can identify as more than just outside factors we can't control. At half a teaspoon an hour, that's a quarter cup a day and 5.7 gallons a year. Working with a heated system for a one hour baseline test, we're looking at a PSI drop just over two on my house. That's similar to the results of a completely cooled system over eight hours and seems more realistic in a pinch. However, these baseline tests were run in the afternoon where the exposed plumbing outside and in the attic were increasing in temperature. When run at night, the drop in pressure is more dramatic at three PSI. A drop about every 24 seconds gets us to a drop of 5 psi over one hour. This is four teaspoons every hour, one cup a day, and 22.8 gallons a year. A 15-minute standard plumber's test only has up to a drop of one psi over the course of a baseline test with no leaks present and thermal contraction. A water pressure gauge test for 15 minutes with a drop of 5 psi is about one drop every six seconds. This is one third of a cup every hour, half a gallon every day, and 182.5 gallons a year. I'm going to be honest with you on the results of the volume lost on these tests. I didn't get around to measuring the water from the eight hour test for a few hours. And by the time I got to it, it had already evaporated. But here's the deal and it applies to all of these small leak tests. Each drop is getting splashed across the measuring cup. Every last molecule that bounces and ends up divided on the side evaporates long before the test is over. So the amounts I'm telling you are based on closing the system, looking at the real-time reading of the pressure and fin, and capturing the water from the faucet with a measuring cup until the real-time reading shows a loss of five PSI. You could do this with the water pressure gauge outside as well. Not enough. But you have to make several trips outside or have someone outside watching the gauge to let you know when you hit the PSI you want to match. Hmm. Too much. Or set up a wise cam on the water pressure gauge and look at the live feed. However, this is a great way to gauge how much water you're losing if you can't find the leak, but know the PSI drop over a defined period of time. We're talking about some small amounts here, but let's take a step back and think about it at a high level. If you suspect a leak and you can't find it, you've checked your faucets, ran food coloring in your toilet, and looked behind appliances, it's going to be in a wall or below your foundation. With plumbing under constant pressure from your water authority, a pinhole leak is probably the smallest leak you'll encounter. You'll be losing water a lot faster than these experiments with a pinhole leak, and water pressure gauge tests will catch it quickly, even with a water heater running. Here's the interesting part of longer tests. There are more variables than what I already mentioned. Temperature changes outside can cause expansion and contraction, working systems introducing hot or cold water in the system, a faucet that seems to slow down a drip faster than I think it's releasing pressure on a closed system, accidental usage, Oh no. and other issues I haven't thought up yet. In other words, I'm giving you a data set here, but your experience can be and probably will be entirely different. However, this proves that a water pressure gauge test is extremely sensitive and highly effective at detecting a plumbing leak over almost any period of time. While this is a great tool, it's also a manual test. If you're interested in something more hands-off but automated, there are water monitor and shutoff systems out there, and you can check out the videos on this channel sharing my experience with Fin Plus and Flow by Moen. In an upcoming video, I'll also be going over this data set along with the results from water meter tests and Fin Plus, getting into some real details on the ins and outs of these kind of tests to give you a set of options when you need to detect a leak. I also have a video covering 15 different ways of detecting a leak below your slab foundation. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.